All right, greetings fellow humans. Durgan here with Real Casual Geeks, AKA, I'm Dave. A um, few days ago, somebody on Twitter had lamented how they wish they could do uh, better virtual photography if only they knew how to use reshade. And then today, a friend of mine got a his first gaming PC. Um, so I thought, you know what? I'm gonna make a little video explaining how to use reshade as well as how to use the photo mode tools that I've grown to love over the last few years by Otis INF, also known as Franz Boma. Um, I'm gonna put a bunch of links down below that you can use to get to the various things. Um, I've already recorded this once and I rambled and rambled. Hopefully this time will go a little bit better. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna probably say uh a lot as well apparently. So let's get into it. First off, what is Reshade, you might be asking. And well, Reshade is a tool that will let you um, post-process your game in real time. So you can just change how your game looks and feels. Um, various things like grayscale and color balancing and various lighting options. Um, you can even do things like make your game out of ASCII characters, so all the letters on your keyboard. Very strange that way, but yeah, it's a thing you can do. And then the photo tools are some camera things where you can take control of the game's camera. So, you know, most games have a photo mode, but most of them, or most games that have a photo mode, the photo mode is really crappy. Uh, you have limited control, um, limited options. France has created tools that just open everything up for you and give you so much more freedom. Um, there are many tools. Uh, let me just open this in another link here. Um, so you can see here that uh, there are, oh, wait, where is it? Oh no, I'm losing it. Oh, okay, this is the big full list of all the games <coughs> with comments. Uh, there was another one, maybe it's at the start of this page. Um, yeah, so these are all the games you can get a different photo mode tool for. Um, these are games that are not using Unreal Engine or maybe it's a modified version of Unreal Engine. Uh, he does have a tool called the Universal Unreal Engine Unlocker, which is really handy. I've only used it once though, so I'm not that familiar with it, and I won't be covering it in here. Um, but yeah, if your game is running on Unreal, you can download one of these and use that instead. Uh, for this, I am going to be using the Dragon Age Inquisition one because it's free. So most of these you have to join up on his Patreon, uh, six bucks a month. Uh, I think that's US. Um, join on his Patreon, you can download them all there. Um, well worth it. He responds to all questions. Uh, super helpful, super friendly. Uh, yeah, nothing bad to say. First steps first. You need to download Reshade. This is a little bit tricky because there's two options here. You want the one with full add-on support, and that's because these really only work with the single-player games. Uh, if you try to use it with a multiplayer game, you run the risk of getting banned from that game because they're, um, um, anti-cheat stuff generally only sees that something is being used that shouldn't and will assume that it's a cheating Thing. Uh, so you could get banned. So don't use it for multi for a multiplayer. <coughs> um, so yeah, you download that. Go to install it. <coughs> Here's your warning on the multiplayer one. Say okay. Uh, give it a moment to find all your games. does eventually do it. If it doesn't, just click browse and find your game. Um, 
Hello. Okay, maybe maybe it's not. What do you do? What do you do? Okay. Uh, oh, it's searching hard right now. It's not getting me my browse button, my browse window. Okay, there we go. We'll cancel this. Uh, so I'm going to do Dragon Age Inquisition. Where is that? There it is. And next, you want to pick DirectX 10 or 11 or 12 because that's the most common right now. Uh, depending on if you happen to know you need something else, then go ahead and pick that. I'm, go, I'm only getting this window because I already got it installed, but I'm going to do the update reshading effects just to go through the process again. Now you get to choose all the effects to install. <coughs> From this list, it's hard to tell what anything really does. Um, all it does is take up space on your hard drive. None of them actually get used unless you activate them in the game, so it's not going to you're not loading all of these every time you run your game. Um, you activate them when you want them. Uh, but it, it does create quite a long list if you have a lot. You'll see that later. Um, but for now, we're just going to pick the Otis INF options. I think that's the only one on this page. Uh, yeah, okay. Go next. And then on this one, you want to do Shader Toggler by Otis INF and IGCS Connector by Otis INF um, at a minimum. You can add other ones you want, <coughs> but for our purposes, these are the two we're going to take. Um, we're actually not going to use this one at all, but put it in because I do use it event sometimes. Uh, and that's it from here. Here, I believe, yeah, so then you hit next. It does its install and it's done. The next thing you need to do is download the camera tool itself. So on this page, on the Dragon Age Inquisition page on his Patreon, um, again, this one is free, so just go ahead and grab it if you have Dragon Age Inquisition. Um, download it, your folder, then extract it. Already got that done. And this is what you'll see. You'll see these files here. The only one you really need to know is the IGCS client. That is the actual photo mode tool. Okay. Um, so there's that. We'll get to that when we need to use it. Um, and then you also need to get the IGCS connector. We installed it, but there's an updated version. Um, so if you want to get the updated version, go to this side. I've got a link in the description. <coughs> go here and download the latest one, 252 and get that unzipped as well have here okay so you've got reshade installed now what you need to do is you need to take this igcs connector copy that and put it in your game folder so dragon age inquisition wherever you've got it installed you want to paste it in here there we go, right there. Then from the shaders folder, copy and paste the IGCS DOF file, to your Dragon Age Inquisition reshade shaders folder and shaders. Paste it right in here. There we go. All right. So that's everything outside of the game that you need to do. Now, if we load up into the game itself, you can see how that all how that all plays out. We'll uh, go through a little setup for reshade. Um, do a little bit of a walkthrough on what reshade does. 
And then we'll get into the photo mode action. So you'll get this information at the top here. When you first load in, that information will stick around so that you can actually do stuff with it. It's not staying for me because I've already done it. Oh, there. Okay. And so then we want to get into the game itself. Come on, come on. There we go. First time I did this took me about 25 minutes to get to this point. <laughs> I think. Make a much better time this time. Okay, so here we are in the game. Let's move away from people so that we don't have to listen to them yap. Okay. So, what you want to do first is configure your reshade. Press the home key on your keyboard, and then go to settings. And really all that I do in here, you could, there's a lot of stuff as you can see. Um, but all I do is right around the middle here, you can set what key you use to take your screenshot. I have it set to print screen. And then you can set the folder for where these screenshots are going to be saved. And I make a different location for every game in a default captures folder that I have on my OneDrive. That way I can access the photos from anywhere. And I know the captures folder is where all my fresh photos are. Um, I do have another place where I move final photos to, but you handle your files the way you want. I'm not telling you how to do that. Um, and yeah, that, that's it for here. Okay, so we've got this configured. We are ready to take some screenshots, almost. Here's where the, one of the tricks are. You now have to go back to this folder. Whoops, not that one. Where did I put it? Oh, did I close it? What a goof, okay. I seem to have closed it, so let's go back. Stuff. Dragon Image Inquisition. So IGCS client, we wanna open that. Um, I, the best way for your game to handle things is if you go to your options and set your display to windowed full screen. That will give you the easiest um, alt tab experience for most games. All right. Um, so we've got this loaded first thing to do is click inject DLL and in the top left if you watch top left it'll give you some notifications as to what's happening initializing initialization complete and camera found all right so now you can take control of the game's camera in order to take excellent photos okay um, the controls for that are under key bindings if you're using a keyboard or gamepad button bindings if you want to use your gamepad. I haven't done it with a gamepad. I imagine some aspects would be really nice, but I've not done it. I'm used to the keyboard. So that's what we're going to cover here. Um, and you want to have your, you need a keyboard that has the numpad on it. So if your keyboard doesn't have that, you're going to be a little messed up here. You might want to try using a controller. Um, so a numpad is what we're going to use, and here's sort of how it goes. I'm just going to move this off the screen so we can see what's all going on here. So let's say I have found a nice place to take a photo. We're going to go just in the archway here. Go, okay. And... First things first, you want to pause the game by pressing zero on numpad. Um, you can 
wait until your character gets into a position that you want if they're one of these ones where they're automatically moving around. Um, once you have them in a nice position, then hit zero to pause the game. Then you want to press delete to get rid of the interface. And then you want to press insert to activate the camera. Okay. Now, once the camera is activated, the mouse won't work anymore. In some games, you can use the mouse to control the camera by holding down the right mouse button, but not in this game. Every game has slight differences. You'll have to encounter those as you go. Um, generally, it's pretty straightforward, though. Uh, the keyboard controls are pretty typical across the games. Um, so yeah, we're going to use a keyboard. For this, moving the camera is done on the numpad, and rotating the camera is done with the normal arrow keys. So, 8 moves forward, 5 moves back, 4 moves left, 6 moves right, okay? 7 moves up, 9 moves down. All right. Um, if you want to do a portrait mode photo, you have to do Alt 1 or 3, and that will rotate the camera either 90 degrees left or 90 degrees right, or just keep going. I personally like going this way because I tilt my head to the right better than I do to my left, so <laughs> we're going to go with that. Um, then just move the camera into the position you want. Uh, you can also use the plus and minus keys to zoom in and zoom out. And it is a it is a, a zoom in and zoom out. It's a POV thing. So it will compress or expand the image almost like a real camera. Okay. Um, I'm going for a nice tight shot here. Uh, sometimes getting the movements right is a bit tricky. Generally not too bad. Okay. So there's our shot. This is sideways because my monitor won't rotate. Um, and yeah, this is how it's got to be. If there's a better way, I don't know what it is. If you know what it is, let me know. Uh, so okay, we've got that. <coughs> we have a nice framing. Got a noisy background though. And uh, while this might make an okay picture, it's not great. Um, if we now hit the home key to bring up reshade, you can see it automatically locks the camera. So bumping, you can't bump the keys to accidentally ruin your composition. Um, go down here and make sure that your IGCF DOF, IGCS DOF effect is enabled. And then we can go to add-ons to this place, IGCS connector where we have depth of field control. So if we start the depth of field session, you can see things look very weird. Um, this is not pretty, this is not our shot. <laughs> There's a few controls, basic controls to do here, to use here. Um, and a little confused because one seems gone. Oh no, there it is. Uh, just not where I thought it was. <laughs> Okay, so bokeh size. Bokeh is when you see little tiny lights that are all blurred out in the background. That blurring effect is called bokeh, if you didn't know. Um, and this is how you set the size. Now, generally you don't want it to be too big, depending on the situation, but play around with it. You'll see how it works. I'm going to go for about a 0 0.02. That's generally a good place to start. Um, and then, then you want to use this focus delta X to set. It, it essentially sets your focus point, the thing that you want to have in focus. And that you can see as I slide it around, one of these images is moving. What you want to do is you want to line that up with the thing that you want to have in focus, in this case, the eyes. And once that's good, you're pretty much good to go. If you're having troubles lining it up, there is this show magnifier option. And that enables a little magnification window. You can move that around. You have to click in the, click in the field and, scroll and slide. 
um, and that'll move it around and you can change how zoomed in it is well for better alignment uh, it's tough when the thing gets pixelated <coughs> but still better than trying to do it from afar um, so now you've got that lined up and ready to go now you want to set what your blur looks like you can either do aperture shaped or circular circular is just a circle as represented down here aperture is based on more of a real world camera where the different leaps of the shutter of the aperture determine the shape of the bokeh okay so you can have two points three four five six so many until you wind up with a circle but you don't want to do that because that's you don't want to do it this way because that's going to slow things down a lot i like five uh you can change how rounded out the edges are which is kind of fun at times depending on what you're taking an image a photo of right uh, let me just turn this magnifier off um you can do a ro rotation angle to set how what angle your bokeh is at um, and this really all depends on like if you're just blurring a background you probably won't see this but if there are little points of light that might get blurred out or little points of interest then maybe you want to be concerned about that but every image will dictate your settings right you're going to make different choices for different images <coughs> you also have this quality option here now at its most basic uh, you won't probably won't notice anything um, the higher this number is the longer it will take to generate the blur I generally like to use about a nine uh, and you'll see what happens when that kicks in when we go to render it there are other options here um, I don't generally use them feel free to mess with them uh, there is another link that I have to try to remember to put in here hopefully I do um, it's for framed which is a framed sc is it home of frame screen frame screenshot community yeah um, and there are loads of guides of, for things in there as well um, that you can use to figure out different settings on here, how to use this uh, france also has links available that you can find as well um and yeah so those are generally all the settings that i use um so once you've once you've made all your choices come down here and click start render and we're done there we go now this background looks a whole lot better here it is with it off and again rendered okay so that's a bit heavy it's not too bad um you can go considerably less oh, that one actually turned out not too bad <laughs> uh let's drop let's drop it wait three uh you can see here there's like multiple versions of it it's generally it's it's what it's kind of doing is it's pasting new copies in a circular pattern according to whatever whatever option you chose here so the the higher this number the more copies it puts down and the blurrier the more um the better quality the result is right so yeah so then you just hide reshade hit your print screen and there you go your image is done um one thing to keep in mind though if you decide you're done and you re-enable the camera and the game 
it may not go back to what you're expecting. That's because you have to end the session. And there we go. We're, oh, no. There we go. So you end your session, you release the camera, and now you're back, back in the game. Ready to go. Find a new location to take more screenshots. Oh, one thing I forgot, I'm inserting this at while well, editing. Um, one other thing I want to cover is uh, the hot sampling. Uh, also, I didn't mention this before. If you haven't done it yet, then um, just keep in mind, do not close this window. You need this window to be opened. Notice I didn't mention that. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, hot sampling. This is pretty cool, cumbersome to use. I'm not sure, there may be things I'm not aware of on how to, how to use it better, um, but this will let you take screenshots larger than what you're playing. So I'm playing at 1920 by 1080 because I'm a peon and can't afford a 4K monitor. Um, even though sometimes my things tell me that I can do 4K on my monitor, I don't think I've ever actually done 4k anyways um so yeah in the example of let me just get into a photo here mm -hmm. and so in this example <coughs> my eyes are kind of tiny so i can't really tell if i'm focusing on them I go to hot sampling I can choose a resolution that is higher three times four times five times 5.7 time, five times right I tend to go three times just because I still kind of see what I'm doing um, so you select the new size you got a whole lot here that you can do uh, so it depends on what you want what your purposes are uh, but I go the 16.9 monitor size Three times, shows a new resolution to set. Switch the game after resizing. So when I hit the set button, it's going to go back to the game. Boom. Now it's really, really freaking big. It's spread across. It's attempting to spread across four of this size monitor. <coughs> um, so that's a little cumbersome. Uh, if I switch back to here, here um that do oh hey okay so these but you uh readjust things you can see what you need to see so uh if you saw my setup here i have this main monitor plus i have another monitor off the right side and another monitor off the left side Plus, I have a drawing tablet down below. Um, basically, I'm now seeing Dragon Age across four monitors. <laughs> it's kind of cool. But anyways, uh, yeah, so that, that's handy. I didn't know I could do that. It'd be nice if I could just like slide it down a little bit. But, you know, we take what we can get. Um, so now... If you load up, oh no, oh no, reshade won't load, but it thinks it's loaded, oh no, okay, um, let's go back to normal resolution, okay, and then we'll Go to the higher resolution while reshade is open. Okay. Can't take out of the game, can I? No, that's in game. Okay. Um, that is awkward. 
I poof. Okay, well. If you can figure out how to get it to work, um, you would then just start your photo mode session. Uh, get the magnifier if you need it. Put it on the thing you want to focus on and move everything around until you've got it in focus. This helps. This can help let you see things larger so that you can get in closer and have more detail to be able to align things up better. Um, the other benefit here, though, is um, I think on my other monitor here, I can see it well enough. Wow, this is really slow. Something else must be going on because it's not normally this slow for me. See if we can make this work. So close. Okay. Um, as far as I can tell, that should be lined up all right. Just gonna render that. Okay, and we're back. Um, that took a long time. Normally it doesn't take that long. Hopefully on your system, it will behave better. Um, but as you can tell, increasing the resolution does potentially have some issues. Um, but we're done. Uh, I'm just gonna hide reshade. Maybe, if it lets me. Can we hide you, please? Go. Nope. Then we'll take the screenshot. I think it did it. I don't know. Um, but. Now, for some reason, reshade won't come up, so that's an issue. We'll just switch over to the photo mode tool. We'll go back to our regular resolution, and everything should behave better now. Oh, it's black because we didn't get to end our session, so we'll reshade open again, end the session, and we are good. If we go look at our photo mode, no, it did not take a screenshot. Okay, so something must have gotten messed up there. Don't know what, but at any rate, that is how the hot sampling works. Um, I promise it's good when it's good. <laughs> um, but play around with it. See how it behaves for you. Um, if, for example, you're in a situation where uh, the game is sort of okay, but somehow you're still getting the toolbar or the taskbar down here showing up, you might need to click fake full screen. Um, but generally, things should behave fairly well. Um, and I think that's about it. I do have another thing from the original video that is coming up here. So have fun. I'm going to give a little preview on something else here. You'll have to dive into it yourself because it's pretty, uh, it's a lot of getting used to. 
you've got this option here for show camera path control window. This is for creating fly throughs of your game. How that works is <coughs> all the controls for that are at the bottom of your key bindings. Um, and then in the game, it starts about gamepad settings start here, camera path usage. They're at the bottom, okay? Um, for the keyboard, I'm just going to move this off so we can see. Um, I'm going to go up here. And hopefully this works. My game, for some reason, doesn't seem to be generating things very far away, so may not do what I'm hoping quite. Um, but we're going to give it a shot. So from here, we're going to go do a fly through into the keep. The first thing you do, whoops, uh, get your camera oriented the way you want. Uh, activate the camera, disable the interface. But since this is an animation, we don't want to pause the game. Okay, um, unless you do, that's, you know, it's up to you, it's up to you. So we're gonna do F4, you see here, now it shows we have one path. So we, we've created a path. And it automatically makes a node right at the start, I believe. Um, you know what, just to be safe, let's assume it doesn't. And we're gonna press F10 to create a node right where we're at. Now you can move the camera to where you want. And then create a new node by pressing F10. You see here that we have two nodes now. Uh, maybe creating a path created a node right at the start, but it didn't show anything. So <coughs> play around with it. You'll get used to it. Um, so now we're going to move this way here, not too far. In a situation like this, you want to create a node, I think, near the top of the stairs. Because um, if you create it too far along, you'll end up going through the stairs. I'm sure you're going to encounter that at some point, so you'll see what I mean. Uh, so yeah, F10 for a new node. And then straight on through. Oh, good. The, the throne did load. Uh, come up here. There we go. F10 for the last node. So we got four nodes and one path. <coughs> Don't recall doing multiple paths. It gets complicated. And I don't think I ever wanted to try it because I was afraid of breaking stuff before actually knowing what I was doing and then never really got to knowing what I was doing. Okay, so anyways, um, before you hit play though, uh, a few things to consider. If you are doing some sort of recording or something, you may want to create a three second delay before it starts. Uh, so you can head over and press record or whatever. Um, there's also an ease in and an ease out option. You can have playback has constant speed or you uncheck it. If not checked, the time between nodes is constant. So the camera will move faster on longer segments compared to shorter segments. You're going to have to play around with that to get a feel for how that works. If it's checked, then the camera moves the same speed between all segments. But it gets tricky around nodes. Uh, depending on the nodes, the orientation of the camera will matter. So when it hits a node, it could suddenly veer off in another direction momentarily. Um, so again, this is a complicated thing. You're going to have to play around with it to get a feel for how it works. Um, so our play time here is five seconds. I think 
I want that to be a little bit longer. That's from start to end, okay? Uh, I'm gonna go for 12 seconds, Let's see what that's like. And once you've, I don't, I don't know what these do, the camera shake control, I never actually touched that. Um, I've paused, override, game speed, close window. Yeah, okay, we're just gonna leave it. Um, yeah, once you've made your choices, click play. Then ease out. Perfect, okay. So you saw there was that little glitch here, right at the top here. Yeah, oh, So yeah, that's that's just a matter of getting used to how the nodes work. And uh, all you can do is play around with it, learn its nuances, and have fun. So yeah, I think that's about it. If uh, you have any questions, let me know. And if you need more, that I can't help with, uh, check with Franz either on his Twitter or on his Patreon. And uh, yeah, I uh, look forward to seeing what you do. Take care.